It is paradoxical, yet true to say, that the more we know, the more ignorant we become in the absolute sense. For it is only through enlightenment that we become conscious of our limitations. Precisely one of the most gratifying results of intellectual evolution is the continuous opening up of new and greater prospects. The spread of civilization may be likened to a fire, first a feeble spark, next a flickering flame, then a mighty blaze, ever increasing in speed and power. In the 21st century, the robot will take the place which slave labor occupied in ancient civilization. The feeling is constantly growing on me that I had been the first to hear the greeting of one planet to another. The harness of waterfalls is the most economical method known for drawing energy from the sun. There is no doubt that some plant food such as oatmeal is more economical than meat and superior to it in regard to both mechanical and mental performance. Such food, moreover, taxes our digestive organs decidedly less and, in making us more contented and sociable, produces an amount of good difficult to estimate. The Secretary of Hygiene or Physical Culture will be far more important in the cabinet of the President of the United States, who holds office in the year 2035, than the Secretary of War. I constructed a laboratory in the neighborhood of Pikes Peak. The conditions in the pure air of the Colorado mountains proved extremely favorable for my experiments, and the results were most gratifying to me. I myself eschew all stimulants. I also practically abstain from meat. Archimedes was my ideal. I admired the works of artists, but to my mind, they were only shadows and semblances. The inventor, I thought, gives to the world creations which are palpable, which live and work. The year 2100 will see eugenics universally established. In past ages, the law governing the survival of the fittest roughly weeded out the less desirable strains. Then man's new sense of pity began to interfere with the ruthless workings of nature. As a result, we continued to keep alive and to breed the unfit. We wind a simple ring of iron with coils. We establish the connections to the generator, and with wonder and delight, we note the effects of strange forces which we bring into play, which allow us to transform, to transmit and direct energy at will. Let the future tell the truth and evaluate each one according to his work and accomplishments. The present is theirs. The future, for which I have really worked, is mine. Our virtues and our failings are inseparable, like force and matter. When they separate, man is no more. Every living being is an engine geared to the wheelwork of the universe. Though seemingly affected only by its immediate surrounding, the sphere of external influence extends to infinite distance. As in nature, all is ebb and tide, all is wave motion. So it seems that in all branches of industry, alternating currents, electric wave motion will have the sway. The scientists of today think deeply instead of clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. The history of science shows that theories are perishable. With every new truth that is revealed, we get a better understanding of nature and our conceptions and views are modified. With ideas, it is like with dizzy heights you climb. At first, they cause you discomfort and you are anxious to get down, distrustful of your own powers. But soon the remoteness of the turmoil of life and the inspiring influence of the altitude calm your blood. Your step gets firm and sure and you begin to look for dizzier heights. The scientific man does not aim at an immediate result. He does not expect that his advanced ideas will be readily taken up. His work is like that of the planter, for the future. His duty is to lay the foundation for those who are to come and point the way. If we want to reduce poverty and misery, if we want to give to every deserving individual what is needed for a safe existence of an intelligent being, we want to provide more machinery, more power. Power is our mainstay, the primary source of our many-sided energies. It seems that I have always been ahead of my time. 
I had to wait 19 years before Niagara was harnessed by my system, 15 years before the basic inventions for wireless, which I gave to the world in 1893, were applied universally. Electrical science has revealed to us the true nature of light, has provided us with innumerable appliances and instruments of precision, and has thereby vastly added to the exactness of our knowledge. All knowledge or form conception is evoked through the medium of the eye, either in response to disturbances directly received on the retina or to their fainter secondary effects and reverberations. Other sense organs can only call forth feelings which have no reality of existence and of which no conception can be formed. We have soon to have everywhere smoke annihilators, dust absorbers, ozonizers, sterilizers of water, air, food and clothing, and accident preventers on streets, elevated roads, and in subways. It will become next to impossible to contract disease germs or get hurt in the city, and country folk will got to town to rest and get well. When a coil is operated with currents of very high frequency, beautiful brush effects may be produced, even if the coil be of comparatively small dimensions. The experimenter may vary them in many ways, and if it were nothing else, they afford a pleasing sight. By an irony of fate, my first employment was as a draftsman. I hated drawing. It was for me the very worst of annoyances. Fortunately, it was not long before I secured the position I sought, that of chief electrician to the telephone company. The trend of opinion among eugenists is that we must make marriage more difficult. Certainly no one who is not a desirable parent should be permitted to produce progeny. Modern science says, the sun is the past, the earth is the present, the moon is the future. From an incandescent mass we have originated, and into a frozen mass we shall turn. Merciless is the law of nature, and rapidly and irresistibly we are drawn to our doom. I do not think you can name many great inventions that have been made by married men. The human being is a self-propelled automaton entirely under the control of external influences. Willful and predetermined though they appear, his actions are governed not from within, but from without. He is like a float tossed about by the waves of a turbulent sea. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments and they wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. There is no memory or retentive faculty based on lasting impression. What we designate as memory is but increased responsiveness to repeated stimuli. I do not think there is any thrill that can go through the human heart like that felt by the inventor as he sees some creation of the brain unfolding to success. Such emotions make a man forget food, sleep, friends, love, everything. The universal utilization of water power and its long-distance transmission will supply every household with cheap power and will dispense with the necessity of burning fuel. The struggle for existence being lessened, there should be development along ideal rather than material lines 